Hey everybody, this is John Trabush from policyviz.com. Here's another data viz critique, this one of this broken bar chart that I found in a World Economic Forum blog post uh, created by Statista, 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 I don't even know how to pronounce it, so let's go with Statista for now. So what we have here is a bar chart, uh, number of Delta variant infections from COVID. Now it's also dated July 1, I just found it, but let's just assume they update it more regularly. I don't know if they do. But notice this broken bar chart here for the UK. And just this break here makes this really long bar much shorter. Why is that a problem? Well, because that's an arbitrary decision that I can make to cut the data. And really, we don't want to violate that fundamental rule of visualizing data, which is to be true and objective and honest with the data. What does the data actually look like? I mean, that's what it actually looks like, right? I just typed the data in, made this bar chart. You can see that that UK bar is so much bigger. The number of infections from the Delta variant in the UK at the beginning of July was so much greater than the other countries in this graph. And what did they do? Well, it appears, and here's just my graph. I place it on top of their graph. It appears they just divided the number of total infections by 10. But you can't just do that. Even if you're going to add that little line that shows a break, it's violating this fundamental rule of data viz. I could have made this number anything I want. Why, why not make it 5,000? Make it 4,000. I can make this number anything I want. If I'm going to put a break in that bar, it's an arbitrary decision. Now, a couple of comments from my Twitter feed when I made a little note about this on Twitter was one comment was like, well, what about trying a W.E.B. Du Bois spiral chart, right? So you could try a spiral chart like this. I'm sure you've seen that if you're watching this video. If not, uh, check out my book where I talk a little bit about this and also some other great works uh, that also talk about W.E. Du Bois and his fantastic work. I made it as a radial chart. I didn't spiral it all the way inside. This doesn't really fit the pro fit fix the issue. It also has a number of other problems. It also has this like this gap, which I never know whether I'm supposed to include it or not, right? So three eight seven four five minus, you know, should that fill be zero or should it be empty there? I don't really know. But anyway, this doesn't really solve the problem. The problem is, of course, we have this one big outlier, and we want to actually show all the data, and then we want to enable people to make comparisons within the other countries, right? So one way we could do this is to have two graphs, right? We have the one graph with the big outlier and also enable people to make comparisons within the other countries. So we could use two graphs. For my mind, to be honest, I actually just want to show how big this bar is relative to these other countries. I'm not sure I need both, but let's just say, for example, maybe some other context, you want to have both graphs, a zoom out and a zoom in. And so what I did is I pulled these together and I put them in the actual uh, Statista Statista uh, uh, layout here. So I put the graph right on top. I got rid of the little bars here. I just threw a little box here. I got rid of these because it's not all going to fit. And you see, I just added a little bit of a closer look. I added this bar here and I added a chart that actually correctly demonstrates and shows the data. So it is a pretty fundamental rule when it comes to visualizing data not to break a bar like this because it distorts the data. We would never go in and say in any other case, I'm just going to shorten the bar or make the line shorter, or make the circle, uh, squeeze the circle, made it smaller just because I want to, just because it looks better when it fits. Data are messy. Data is the hard part about visualizing our data, but we want to do so in a true and objective way. So if you want to learn more about better ways to visualize your data, check out some of the other videos in this channel and be sure to subscribe. Thanks so much. This is John Twalbush from policyviz.com.